If you have registered at CalJobs, I went to Job Seekers Learn More to Job Seeker Services. But I am going to go to Resume Builder. All right, so uh, quick moment of your time. All right, so uh, quick moment of your time. What's a resume all about? What do you want a resume to actually convey? Sell you. Tell you how awesome you are for this job. Lie to people who are interviewing you. Nothing. <laughs> Contact information. Hey, I appreciate that. Reference. Referees. <laughs> Anything else? Well, I'll give one last try in case there's one that's. Maybe you're waiting for one. All right. Now, right. Right. That's like a subset of Capitary Lies. Now, previous job experience, is that classified as <coughs> skills or is that completely different? Wages. Is that, none of that's supposed to go on the resume. It surprises me that you are talking about the environment in which you're sitting right now. Medication. Skills. Medication. Yeah. <laughs> sitting that's, in an environment. That's new for well. Medication. People cope with things differently, man. Wouldn't that fall under skills? Oh, education. Well, yeah, I guess so. I think that's under experience. All right. That's a pretty good list. Let's narrow this list down now. I think we probably have a couple that we're going to be more incorporate those discussions. Mm -hmm. The bribes, smelling, Don't you lies, say that. Liar. better lies are probably things that maybe don't exactly fit the broad categories of what we're trying to accomplish with a resume. Suffice it to say, a resume really is concentrating on a contact. Objective. Education. Skills. We're definitely looking at experience, some training, okay? Contact, definitely. Reference, important in a resume? It can be. Can be, however, sometimes appended or an addendum, okay? The story in and of itself doesn't necessarily carry your list of references. Previous experience, and education all covered. All right. Let's talk about this standout here for a second. Now you've heard me say, how long do you have looked in terms of you being looked at on your resume? What's the average? You ever hear me talk about that? Eight seconds. Okay. Eight seconds for the average job it's open and available. You get about eight seconds of look. How does that make you feel? <laughs> and that's typically for something that is a solicitation where you're answering an advertisement. You're answering something on Monster. You're at, at answering something on Craigslist. All right. You are the one doing the responding. Stack of resumes, get about eight seconds. What's your objective then to get in that eight seconds? That first sentence, it should be stand out, get to the pile that says next step. That's your whole objective, okay? And that comes as a composite of your resume and your cover letter usually in that order. Look at resumes first. They meet the objective. The resume and cover letter package goes in a positive response pile. You have an average of 400 available applicants who are looking for one job. You're going to get down to maybe 20. So your job is to get through the 380 that aren't going to make it. 
So let's talk about the things that aren't going to make it right off the get-go. Give me one thing. You look at me as an employer, you're looking at me giving you that eight seconds. What am I going to downgrade you for immediately and put you in the no pile? Uh, if you don't have your contact information, stop. Just spelling. Well, not in. Did you say something about organs? <laughs> Drawings? Okay, fair enough. What else? Quality of the paper? I don't want to put a lot of paper. I've seen people write stuff on resumes where it's not misspelled, but they, they put it as they would say it. Like, I'm really good at this and that. Formality? Formality. Yeah, there you go. Yes. Tim I, Tim, I noticed you were taking pictures of the board, so I appreciate you doing that uh, and keep doing it. All right. Anything else? What do you think number one is on that list? Yes, you should. Any and any and every way in order to get in touch. This is everyone Facebook. that's linked to your Facebook. We're going to Google that on our own anyway. Now I've talked about this already, but I'll make sure I talk about it again. Okay? If you are one who is given to social media, good for you. No judging here. If your social media account is Hot Bun 69, <laughs> okay, then that's probably not the contact you want to put on your resume. Unless you're going for a job at Hooters, the Mail Strip Review, or somewhere on the Strip in Vegas, or off Strip, depending on your talent base. <laughs> American Gigolo 24/7, probably not one you want to put on your resume. Okay. Now, misspellings are the number one. I'm going to give you, I'll give you a little anecdote. I think you've, some of you have heard me talk about this before. Let's talk about Gmail. I have a Gmail account. Suffice it to say, that's my Gmail account. There's another John Dahlgren out there in the world who has this Gmail account. Gmail considers them the same. I get that guy's shit all the time. <laughs> and he's quite the job seeker, by the way. I don't know. I don't know. But all I can tell you is that Google does not see the period as significant. Okay, first initial, last name, not bad, all right, unless you have 26 letters in your last name, in which case you might want to reduce that volume. The way we do it here at Butte College is not a bad way to go. Your last name and your first two letters of your first name. Hint, caution, you ought to know this. I mentioned Hotmail for a reason. Don't give your resume a Hotmail address. Nine times out of ten, you will be DQ'd into the 380 pile immediately. Hotmail is one of the very worst. Matter of fact, number one on the list of don't answer that. 
because they're prone to viruses and all kinds of issues, typically fake email addresses, not real. And most of your corporate spam filters will filter it out. Gmail, okay. Yahoo, kinda. Outlook.com, okay. It hasn't made it through all the filters well, quite yet. At me.com, if you're an old Mac user and you're, you're back in the day when Apple was doing me.coms, so that's fine, mostly. So then what would you recommend? Honestly, where are you? Right now? Uh-huh. So you all have what? Yeah, as soon as we stop being a student, we lose our keep call of email. Okay. Yeah. And most of you have your email address forwarding from school, forwarding to where? I would say probably seven out of ten of you are using a Gmail address. Can't get it into because they want information and I refuse to give them personal information. There you go. Okay. I'm morally opposed to giving out information and you probably want to not put your email address on as a contact. <laughs> Don't put contact information out there that you are not going to access. Especially don't put contact information out there that's going to be some sort of a ruse or a lie. Okay? Why? Because you're not going to make it in the 20 pile, you're going to be in the 380 pile every time. <coughs> okay? So Gmail, good. Yahoo, okay. Outlook.com. Meh. MEH. Okay. Social media. Your resume does not and should really not include a Twitter account or a Facebook. <coughs> it can include a LinkedIn profile. However, caution, okay, if you're going to put a LinkedIn profile out there, have a profile to look at. It's not sufficient for you to put a LinkedIn profile out there and have nothing in it. Well, that's a controversial issue. Some people are morally opposed to pictures. Mm -hmm. If you're morally opposed to a picture, if you're morally opposed to being judged by a picture, don't put a picture out there, which means you probably don't want to put a LinkedIn profile out there. I had to change my picture because I was like a douchebag. That's a hint for you not to keep stuff just exclusively in my documents. Weird. Just so you know. All right, so I'm going to take off the uh, sketches of organs. We'll save that for super bad. Okay? But we'll definitely talk about misspellings. Here's a myth. Paper makes the difference. Not anymore. What about a hunter? What did you just say? Oh, sorry, my advanced my advanced age. Yeah, you were you kind of went downcast with your voice on that because you didn't really want anybody to know that you're willing to pay a hundred dollars. Okay, fair enough. Paper's a myth. With our electronic world now, not so much. What's not a myth, though, is let's talk about contact information. <coughs> Readable font and readability defined by a mechanized automated scanning system. So if you want to look that up, let's go out to the interweb and let's see what it says on the almighty Google. Best font for scan OCR, optical character recognition. Okay. 
And it says OCR font, Calibri. So let's look up, yep, let's take a look at Microsoft Word and let's look at what Calibri looks like. Noted. Wait, look at what the standard stock font is right out of the box. Used to be Times New. Used to be in Microsoft Word, all you could get was Times New Roman. Now, it's Calibri. I agree with Tasha. Any resume ever built in Comic Sans will be thrown immediately in the 380 pile. Mm-hmm. Why? Because what does Com Comic Sans really say about you? Super casual. And you're not taking it seriously. It's not your best image. Okay? You don't? No. Oh. It's the one that they use in all the elementary schools. That's like what first grade teacher uses on all the Yeah, classes. it's because his daughter isn't old enough yet. She yeah. just breaks thumb drives. Okay, they use it for preschool too. Ooh, yeah, perfect. <laughs> Christy's back. I hear this. <coughs> there it is. Okay. Comic uh, Sans. Okay. Yeah. That's Bad cool. font. Yeah, I see why. Bad form. <laughs> Let me ask you a question because some of you like to do this type of um, pretty picture. Let's uh, let's do some form of word art. Sweet, <laughs> love word art. Hey girl, hey, this is my resume. Yeah. Right, and I'm gonna make this. Yeah, th I'm gonna make this really nice, and and we'll make it. I don't know some. Well, not Calibri because that's just too obvious. We're we're gonna make it. Oh yeah, let's do this one. That's my that's my name. You have to think about scanning your resume in two different ways. The first way is conventional, going to run it through something that looks like a copy machine and it's going to recognize all those characters. The second way, you're uploading your resume to a response. You're uploading it to Monster and putting it on file. You're uploading it to CalJobs and putting it on file. All that, if you have word art in there, it doesn't respond at all. In other words, it's now a nameless, contactless resume. Where do you think that resume is going to go? <laughs> it's going to go to the bottom of the <laughs> 380 list. Okay? Because they're not going to take any time to look at you. It might look pretty. It's irrelevant. Okay? I feel like that's discriminating. Jane Doe. But then anybody else without a name is going to use that name. It's not going to set me apart. Then make one up. <laughs> what about social security number? You yeah, can I put my social security number on top? Make one up. Yeah, there you go. My parents didn't think it was cool today. I had hipster parents. <laughs> yeah, I had hipster parents. Oh, boy. I had hippies. We talk about stains. That one's frightening on a couple different levels. Okay? A coffee ring, probably not a good idea. I'm desperate. I didn't have any money, man. I'm out. Chances are pretty good you're going to get in the 380 pile. Okay? Written as said. That's actually a very good point. Ebonics, not a good idea. Mm -hmm. 
Not a good idea to be using any type of uh, slang language. Or abbreviations, right? Yeah, what about abbreviations? So let's look at this a slightly different way. Do not write your resume like a text or Twitter. <laughs> Hashtag no hashtag. Now, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratories was here on Friday. Two representatives from that organization, 5,500 employees, national laboratory, federal government. All kinds of opportunity, right? What's the number one thing they're concerned with right now? that you young people are having a very difficult time relating face to face. But you can have amazing conversations by text, by Twitter, by email, by Google chat. You will pour your heart and soul out to the universe when it comes to the web. But when it comes to sitting in front of somebody and having a conversation, being able to explain yourself, doesn't happen. Please, whatever you do, don't make your resume like a text or a chat. You do not try to fit everything in 160 characters, 140 characters. Y-O-U is an acceptable U. The letter U is not an acceptable U. Okay? <coughs> you want to take a picture of that, Tim? Let's talk about abbreviations. Do or don't. Do, but explain. If you want to say drafting technology, yes, I'm going on the same line, Matt. You would give the name followed by the acronym in parentheses. Okay? You don't have to do that every time. You have to do it the first time. Every other instance, then, you can abbreviate DFT because you've already explained yourself up above. Make sense? Okay. Yeah. But we're going to talk about that one in particular in just a minute because that one's important related to your education. your contact information with your address. What typically is in your address line one? Your home address. So if you have a, per uh, a post office box and that's the best way to get in touch with you without a street address, that can sometimes be a problem. Okay? 
kind of like Federal Express, they won't, they won't deliver to a P.O. box. So just think about that. If you have a rural route, that's fine. But you have a street address, a post office box, a street address, a rural route, a street address, some other means of getting your mail. Primary goes up top because whatever the first one is what they're going to mail because I have my P.O. box as my primary and my uh, home address as my secondary nope. and I, everything got mailed to my P.O. box and yep. I wanted to mail it at home. Every time. So Penn Valley, wherever you are, are you on a rural route out there or do you just have a street address? R rural. R U R A L. Rural. <laughs> out in BFE. Okay. Just know that. Is it a good idea to put fancy dots in between all of your information? You go into Wingdings and you have this really cool dot that goes between your city and your state, between your state and your zip code. Is that okay? Not okay. Some scanners will only pick up on the dots. You're screwed. Now all of a sudden you got no contact information. What about a zip code? Notice that the zip code I put up here is five digits, a dash, and four digits. It's a pinpoint, it's a pin more of a pinpoint locator. If you know what your four digit suffix is, put it down. I live in 95926-7114. Put it down. Mm -hmm. Look at any of your bills probably coming from PG&E or anybody else, you probably already have it. Okay? Now notice that I have a red squiggle here, what is that telling you? Misspelled. I misspelled city, right? Then I have a space, then I have state, then I have two spaces for the zip. This is considered standard practice. Two spaces between whatever your city is or your state is and your zip. Why is that important? Scanners want to know. Sometimes one space can be misread and your zip code doesn't come through. So, misspell squiggle, take care of the misspelling. Look at spell check. Look at F7. Between the word state or California, CA. Okay? And be careful with that one, by the way. So, you don't want to put that comma there between no, state and CA? Or no, 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 you put the, put the comma, yeah. Do you not want to have the period after to CA? Like That's what I wanted to talk about. All right? A standard abbreviation for a state in the 50 United States is two capital letters, no period. California, CA. Nevada, NV. Utah, UT, and so on and so on and so on and so on. Okay? Caution. CA is also our brothers and sisters to the north of the border. A? Eh? Yeah, eh? Anybody ever look up a Canadian address, eh? What's their zip code, eh? Probably quite similar to ours. Usually six digits with two letters in it, and if it isn't, it's oftentimes a six digit with a six as a prefix. So if you have any question about your contact information and what it is, go to USPS. Look at the rules. You want to put your best foot forward, which means you need to know what those rules are. Yeah, Tim. Uh, I would just say when you're saying spell check, be careful too and don't trust it because someone I know who lives in Virginia that came out of Regina. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That. My phone's done and it auto-corrected balloons to vagina for some reason. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Virginia to vagina is one thing, but <laughs> vagina, <laughs> balloons to vagina? <laughs> I don't get that. I got balloons for Camden's birthday party and it said 
We should get some vagina for hmm. Cameron's birthday party. Wow. <laughs> that's a party. He's six. I know. Just so you know. All right. So somebody, somebody, give me the top three things I got to remember about my contact information. What? This is after the state and zip code. Okay. Use a decent font. Yep. Preferably the whatever the primary address goes. Address one. Yep. Okay. Very good. Again, you need to be findable. You need, you want to be in that 20 list. If you're going to get in that 20 list, then they got to have a way to get in touch with you. Phone numbers. As many as possible. Which one's okay? And then there's lots of variations, okay? Or you use the capital E, so it looks like yeah. First one might be okay? First or fourth? First one might be okay? First one's only okay. First one might be okay, depends on how scanners pick it up. Second one never okay. Ever. Slashes do not work. Backslash, forward slash, don't do it. A dot? Mm -mm. A dash? Probably not. Again, maybe the scanner will pick it up. And nothing. And so on. Okay? No spaces, no dashes. Mm -hmm. When you input a contact number in your phone, you have a choice of styles, do you not? Show it as parentheses, show it as one plus or plus one, and then a number. Why the plus one? What the heck does that have to do with anything? What is that? It is a country code, but in a cell phone situation, the tenth digit doesn't mean anything, does it? But at home, if you use a landline, I know most of you don't, you don't even know how to use one. <laughs> if I'm going to dial another area code, what do I have to dial first? Was that? W that was Camden's kindergartner teacher that asked that question? I would have punched her in the face and said, don't work with STEM. But <coughs> no, it was just a girl in high school. Mm. I sent a hashtag symbol on a Nokia phone. They didn't even have hashtags then. Mm. Wow. <laughs> right? Duh. How are you supposed to hashtag without the hashtag? Dumbass. Tell me kind of did shit. <laughs> Sorry for my language. I was slipped out. <laughs> <laughs> really? No. Yeah. All right, so if I put in a, an encoded 10-digit number like that, Microsoft Word doesn't have any way of differentiating that unless I tell it it's a telephone number. Okay? Scanners sometimes pick up the spaces, sometimes they pick up the dashes, sometimes they pick up the parentheses, but they won't really pick up anything else. Why am I emphasizing scanners? Most companies will use either as a recruiter, a collecting point for resumes, or a private party will use a scanner and scanning technology. And what are they looking for in your resume besides your contact information? 
ability to transfer information through d digital means. That's awesome. And I'm going to add to it by saying simply, keywords. They're looking for things that match what they're looking for. So if you have a phone number that's out of that general area, you might be kind of just overlooked? Nope. What I'm saying is everything I just said about contact information is going to be secondary to what they're searching for. They're searching on keywords. But if you meet all the keyword criteria and then they get to your contact information and you're nowhere, whoops. Okay. So yeah, your contact information needs to be accurate and true to your best ability, but then we need to talk about keywords. Okay? So if we talk about keywords, and let's talk about education, because this is important. Um, I'm a drafting technology major and I took drafting two 4, 12, 24, 45, 46, and 16. I have no clue what the numbers mean. They does, what does that mean to them? Absolutely nothing. Okay? This is a big don't do it. Keywords, AutoCAD, SolidWorks, Revit, Construction, Manufacturing, okay? Lots and lots and lots of others. Here's something you need to account for. And I touched on this the other day. That might be all fine and dandy, but when you're searching for jobs, you can often see AutoCAD spelled that way. You'll also see AutoCAD spelled this way. Which one's right? They're both right, okay? You often see two words, okay? SOLIDWORKS two words, SOLIDWORKS one word, SOLIDWORKS one word with the capital W in the middle. Which one's wrong? That one's wrong. Okay. That's a stylistic thing. By the way, you find that a lot in resumes that people will use those contracted words where you'll see no spaces in between letters and you'll see a capital letter in between. Okay? Is that considered okay? Not generally, not from a scanner's perspective. On the desktop icon it's like that. I know. Because it's their stuff. So we can't copy them when coding their stuff? I'm, t I'm just telling you that nine times out of ten, okay, an encoder is not going to pick this up. One word or two words? So here's a, here's a couple things to consider for your resume. Uh, this is going to sound really weird, but I'm going to contradict what I said from the outset of the number one thing that resumes get kicked for, misspelling. In your resume somewhere, you're going to want to probably mis mischaracterize SOLIDWORKS as two words and somewhere else one word. You understand what I'm saying? In other words, you want to be picked up by the scanner in either position. So you want to use both of them. You want to use both. Yes. Same with AutoCAD, 
Afraid so. Yep, it contradicts everything I just said. Yep. Under your contact information, you just have lists of keywords, right? Uh, yeah, we'll talk about style and, and, and form and format, yeah. Bizarre. It's, it's a, we're in a state of transition in this new electronified world. Mm -hmm. over there, yep. over there. Yep, over there. What about Autodesk? Um, that would be, if you have multiple certifications from the company, it might be good to put down because they have a wide breadth of. Some companies will mischaracterize AutoCAD as Autodesk. So if you were to say somewhere in your resume, Autodesk AutoCAD or Autodesk Revit, that's perfectly acceptable. Because you've picked up the word Autodesk. Most of you will experience the scanned hopper type evaluation process. Okay? So when we talk about the number one things, what is it you use a resume for? Get noticed. Keywords has now taken more control over the recognition of a resume than what you previously would have experienced in the fit <coughs> feel of the paper or the font, I can't read it. Except Comic Sans, and nobody wants that one. So the scan picks up on certain words they like. What is the first thing you, that you want to put, have them see next? Don't they, that thing picks up enough key words in there. Mm -hmm. what, what, what are they going to look for next up? The words AutoCAD and SolidWorks? And so let's, I'll, I'll use the topic of education as an example, okay? Every course has a title. So if you said DFT2, 